115 miles. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Virginia, USA. Now back in the UK, we've been filming steam land rovers, beach buggies, and Oliver, but we thought we'd cross the pond to try and set a world record. The thing is, every single town in the UK without fault has a football, cricket, or rugby pitch, but most towns in Virginia have one of these. The southern states of the USA are absolutely chock-a-block with racetracks, mostly ovals like this one, although most of them are not this big, alongside full race circuits and drag strips. So considering the concentration of racetracks here, that got me thinking. How many racetracks could I drive on in just 24 hours? So fly in, do one lap, and then get straight back on the road to the next one. Well, it's taken a hell of a lot of organization, but we found the perfect place to do it. We're starting here at Richmond Raceway. It's currently 7 a.m. and we're looking to start the record at 8 a.m. and going right through to 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. So that gives me the perfect amount of time to introduce my companion for the trip. This is the Lotus Evora GT with a 3.5 litre supercharged V6, 416 horsepower, a manual gearbox and rear wheel drive. I felt I should bring a slice of home with me for getting from track to track and then once we arrive letting it rip for one mad lap. So the tank is brimmed with fuel, the passenger seat is brimmed with snacks and energy drinks. Let's start the countdown and fingers crossed this is going to be a good one. Okay, Lotus, let's make some history. Now, the one thing I cannot do is crash this car before the end of the 24 hours. I just need to get around each track, tick them off, and get that record. I won't lie, there are some scary skid marks on this track. You do not want to be those people. Around the final bend, onto the start straight. Lap number one, track number one, done. Right, where's the exit? So one track down, eight to go. The Lotus was about to be put through a gruelling long distance drive whilst being put to the test by whatever Virginia's motorsport arenas had to throw at it, which is why we decided to give it a helping hand. Yesterday, we prepared the Lotus for its epic adventure by giving it the full G-Technic treatment. After a wash and some initial prep, we then coated the car using G-Technic's Crystal Serum Ultra to maximise gloss and surface slickness, as well as creating swirl and chemical resistance. What makes this stuff so special is the introduction of a new 7 nanometer nanoparticle alongside an existing 20 nanometer nanoparticle. That creates a hard top coat and a more flexible base layer once on the car retaining a car's new look. The hard 10H top and softer 7H base layer offer improved swirl resistance over regular 9H paint protection coatings. This serum is a professional product and can only be applied by a G-Technic accredited detailer. And I think you'll agree, the car looks ready to rock. We're on the road then, and the way this state works, we're only 20 minutes from the next track. If you were to do this in the UK, you're talking at least a couple of hours between all the racetracks. This, just down the road. So the next one is called Capital City Speedway, ETA 845. Take the next left onto Dirt Track Road. So let's see what a Lotus Evora GT is like on a dirt track. This is not what the Lotus engineers had planned for this car when they built it. I've been told, low in the turns, high on the straights. Wow, it is bumpy. I must admit, I thought there'd be dust getting thrown up all over the place, but it's much more compacted than I thought. It's a lot of fun. You know what, I prefer this to that big international speedway. Okay, that's track two done and dusted, so to speak. 
Time for track number three, and it's the big one, Virginia International Raceway. For the record, we're looking to drive on nine tracks, so we're two down, seven to go. And to make the record something a bit robust, something that's not too easy, we have gone for driving. We could have gone for visiting, but then you could just turn up in the car park, get a picture there, and that would be that. To drive on all of the tracks in 24 hours, you have to get in contact with every track, convince them to let you onto their tarmac, all in the same day and in a certain order. Do not underestimate how big a logistical task that has been. After the longest leg of the journey so far, we arrived at VIR, the only track on our route with left and right hand bends. Perhaps that's why they gave us a Mustang to follow. I think they were worried I'd get lost. This is where the Evora should come into its own. Yes, it's an Evora GT, so it's good for munching the miles as lotuses go, but the track is where this beautifully engineered chassis is going to really, really come good. Right, sport button, let's let that V6 sing. This place is essentially a resort for petrol heads. You guys will almost certainly recognise it from an old Top Gear episode, where Jeremy's in the SLS, Richard's in a GT3 RS, and May is in a 458. That's a curb. And as I'm sure you all remember, Hammond has a bit of a whoopsie on here in this Porsche. I will not be doing that in the Lotus. What a track this is. These S-bends going up a hill, and then you can see the hotel on the hill here. I've got an image ingrained in my head of James May coming out in the morning with his cup of tea, seeing the cars going past. My God, do Lotus know how to engineer a chassis. This is not just a GT sports car, this is a Lotus. You really start to feel it through your arse, through your hands. The entire chassis is telling you exactly what's going on. The car is moving ever so slightly back onto the home straight. And that, everyone, is a lap of VIR. By far the longest lap we're gonna do in this record. I wish we could stay here longer. I wish we could spend the rest of the trip here. A proper resort for car nuts, but we need to hit the road. So, slight update, we're finished at VIR. We were gonna drive the smaller track there as well as the big track, but it turned out that wasn't available. So suddenly we were a track down, but on the way to VIR, we noticed a completely random speedway that we had never seen before called Boston Speedway. It didn't show up on Google Maps when we looked. We drove straight past it and thought, maybe we should give them a shout. So we have completely cold called them and they've said, yeah, come along. So one minute we were a track down, now we're straight back in the game. Need to fill up the Evora. Track number four, South Boston Speedway called Sobo by the locals, which is a cool name. And this has really shown the diversity of the tracks in Virginia. In our first four tracks, we've had an entire NASCAR stadium. Then straight away, we're at a small local dirt track. Then we're at VIR, which is a full international circuit. And now we're at what I would call a sort of small to medium sized tarmac oval. I'm starting to get used to how to drive these tracks. You might just think it is turning left, straightening the wheel and then turning left. But you just learn how to set the throttle to keep that constant speed going up the banking. And you stay lower than you think. As someone who's a NASCAR noob, I thought you'd be able to carry more speed way out and really be up against the wall, but it's just not the case. You get it slowed for the corner, you look for the rubber, you stick it in, you set the throttle to get that nice constant radius round and then you just peel off the steering and you're up to the wall and then slow again, get the car in. I tell you what, I'm going to be bloody good at turning left once this day is over. That's four tracks done, time to move on to number five and we're getting deeper and deeper into Virginia. 
A massive thank you to South Boston Speedway, cold call, and we were straight in. One of the nicest group of people I've ever met. So thank you guys. I hope you see this video and that we you make your track look cool. Turn left onto State Route 716 down River Church Road. Thank you, Google Maps. We've nearly broken the back of this record now. Four tracks down, which means out of our nine, we're nearly halfway there. We're now heading west towards West Virginia, the very far reaches of Virginia State. But before we get there, I need an especially big American can of energy drink. We are not too far from the Blue Ridge Mountains now, and we've found ourselves at Franklin Motor Speedway. I'm loving this one so far. Cracked concrete, rusty fences. This one looks proper legit. And thanks to the production team, the gate is open and we can just head straight in. This circuit is definitely got more patina than the others. The roots of NASCAR have always been very quaint, very blue collar. So tracks like this are what it's all about down here. Yes, the big speedways are awesome to drive around, but you feel the real history of this state on tracks like this. The sun is going down, the shadows are looming over the circuit. That's circuit number five in the bag, so now it's time to head on to the next one, which is another dirt track. Really looking forward to that now. Unfortunately, getting to that next track wouldn't be quite so easy, as we were about to hit our nastiest hurdle of the journey so far. Okay, not good. On the way back from Franklin, I got separated from the camera crew. Google Maps has taken me down here, and this is quite a deep ford. The Avora has got good ground clearance, but it is not making it through that, unfortunately. Got some friends over there, but that, just there, is the road I need to get to. That takes me to the Blue Ridge Parkway, which will take me to the next track, but I'm afraid a Lotus is not getting through there. Time to make up. There's been a bit of a running joke between myself and the production crew that's been Google Maps versus Waze. And up until that point, Google Maps had been beating Waze 3-0. But back there was the first time that Google Maps has definitely let me down. It wasn't getting through there. We would have ended up with one of those viral Instagram pictures of a lotus very deep in a ditch, and we don't want that. Because of that slight detour, we are gonna have to make up some time. I'm on this epic mountain road, but we do have a schedule with each track. I'm supposed to be at Ararat Thunder Raceway for 8 p.m., so we're gonna need to go for it. Okay, an update, our ETA has now thankfully ticked back to 8 p.m. I've just had one of the most epic drives I've ever had along the Blue Ridge Parkway. I'm gonna remember that drive for a very long time to come. So now we are just down the road from Ararat Thunder Raceway. Whoa, okay. This is a very different surface to the last dirt track. It's not like the powdery dirt that we had on the first dirt track. This is like compacted clay that has this sheen on top of it. And these Michelin tires do not want to bite into it. There is grip sometimes. If you've got any lock on, the back is going. But I imagine that is how the guys race here. Get the nose in and then just plant the throttle and steer the car purely with the throttle pedal. 
There she goes. Oh, yummy thing. So that is track number six ticked off the list. I think if there was a track that I had to survive on this trip, this was the one. I'm glad the car is still in one piece. On to the final one of today before we get some sleep and then get cracking again tomorrow. Number seven, Motor Mile Speedway. And this place shows just how amazing the people of Virginia are. We have turned up at half past 10 on a Thursday night, and they're here with the gates open, all of the floodlights on to show off their amazing track. And what a track it is. It's sunk into this valley with big trees either side. You can see the silhouette on them being reflected by the lights here. After the, the clay of Ararat, the car feels incredibly stable now back on tarmac. Thankfully, all the compacted clay has been spat off the tires by all the road driving, so we're good and clean. Let me put the windows down and let you guys get close to the walls. It is half past 11 at night, so no other tracks are gonna be open today. So this is gonna be the final track for today. The plan is we're gonna get in the car and head to our next target track and stay at a hotel nearby. We're gonna be up super early so that we can capitalize on that 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. time. And hopefully the tracks will open for us so we can add another couple of circuits to our record. I'm knackered, the team is knackered. Let's go get some sleep. It's 6 a.m. the following morning, which means we've got two hours left in our record run before the 24 hours is up. We're in Princeton, West Virginia. We got here last night and there's a speedway just down the road. And we're hoping to get one more after this to get our target of nine. Let's get in the Lotus. Energy was low, we were really starting to feel it now, and West Virginia was about to throw us another curveball. And this was a big one. So, this is the racetrack at Princeton, and this was one of the ones that we really struggled to get into contact with. It's still half six, and no one is up. I thought maybe one of the groundskeepers would be here but it doesn't look like it at all. Very closed. What do you think, guys? Should we hang about and try and knock this one off, or do we head down the road and get another track in? We've got confirmation on the next one, and it's about 45 minutes away, so we risk potentially getting this one, or definitely getting the next. Okay, so we get to this next one at what? Quarter past half past seven, and then? Yeah. That would be that. It's a shame. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's not muck about. Let's get back in the cars. I will admit, it did all seem like it was going a bit too well. So I'm not surprised we've had that hiccup this morning, but we're still gonna push on and make sure we finish off this record. The Evora is something truly special. If you're in an Elise or an Exige, you know all about it. You pretty much have the race car experience on the road. But in the Evora, it's so comfortable and so smooth, especially on the highway, that you could be forgiven for thinking that you're in any comfortable sports GT car. But then you get to a corner 
and you fire up that V6 engine and this car very much reminds you what badge is on the front. It will not be long before you cannot buy a new supercharged engine. There are so few on the market now. So the fact that Lotus has stuck with this 3.5 litre supercharged V6, it makes it stand out against almost all of its rivals simply through that powertrain. The Evora is soon to be replaced by the Amira. That's actually replacing all three current Lotuses, at least Exige and Evora. So it's the end of the line for this car and it won't be long before it's the end of the line for the V6 supercharged engine. So this is our way of celebrating an end of an era. It's going out with one hell of a bang. Welcome to Beckley Motorsports Park, our final track. And I think it's fitting that we finish this record on a dirt track. What's been fascinating about the last 24 hours is seeing the variety of motorsport that happens in this area of the world. We started off with top level NASCAR, the biggest spectator sport in the world. And we end up at a place where there's banger racing, weird tubular chassis with massive wings on the top. I think if I was to move to this area of the world, you'd find me here. There's nothing quite like it on the international sports scene. Ford, Chrysler, Chevrolet, something the working man could relate to. Track number eight done and dusted. There's our record at 7.56. We'd done it, but before we could really celebrate, there was one more thing to do. After 24 hours of torture, the Evora deserved a good wash. And thanks to the preparation using the G-Technic Crystal Serum Ultra, the dirt and track scum simply fell off the car without any bother, thanks to those clever little nanoparticles. And check out that beading. We came to America to set a world record, the most racetracks driven on in 24 hours, and we've done it. The number is eight, and I think that's a really solid achievement. This Lotus Evora has been put through a lot in the last 24 hours and the only battle scar it's got is a slightly droopy front rubber lip from the dirt tracks. It's coped incredibly well. Given another week, I would take this car and keep going. There's a countless amount of racetracks in and around this area. And actually, North Wilkesboro Speedway is just over that way, that being the track that Clarkson burst the tyre in his SLS. I do need to get this car back to Lotus at some point, but one more track won't hurt, will it?